Hello and welcome to NewsClick. One of the most controversial issues to be taken up in this session of Parliament is that of raising the FDI cap in the insurance sector. This move is part of a series of economic reforms promised by the Modi government and is seen as a way to increase uh, the efficiencies in the insurance sector. However, the move has run into trouble with the Congress refusing to support the move, as well as opposition from various left parties as well as trade unions. To discuss the matter, we have with us Dr. Surajit Mazumdar, Professor of Economics at JNU. Thank you for joining us today. Now, to begin with, why was the insurance sector opened up to FDI in 2000? I mean, what were the benefits that were supposed to accrue to the industry and to the country as a whole? And what has happened in the last 15 years? I think a distinction needs to be made between why that particular move was taken and what was said to be the benefits that would accrue from that. The main driving force behind that was to open up what was considered a lucrative business for private players. It was part of a process of uh, opening up and liberalization of the financial sector where in a sector like insurance, any, any insurance is, commands large quantums of financial resources and is able to operate and play in markets with those resources. So it's those interests which were mainly behind the opening up of the sector rather than any clear-cut economic rationale. Particularly in the case of insurance, an argument which may not be similarly applicable to many other activities, there is a very strong case for a public sector monopoly, which is what was created in India on the basis of nationalizations in 56 and 73 of life and general insurance. So there is a very strong rationale. Now the argument that was made, however, was that the penetration of insurance in India is very low. Private players will in lead to an expansion of that sector. There will be increases in efficiency because of heightened competition, none of which actually is valid for the insurance sector. If you take, for example, the question of competition, mm -hmm. what is the insurance business? People pay a premium to an insurance company for transferring the burden of risk mm -hmm. to that company. That everyone put pays a premium that in case of any eventuality, the financial implications of that unfortunate eventuality will be borne by the insurance company. And the insurance companies basically operate on the principle that when a large number of people pay their premium, not everyone will face the that. You can. But in the process, they come to command large quantums of financial resources, which they are able to deploy in various places and earn a return. Now, if that is the nature of that business, surely you cannot have a process where there's a competition where there are insurance companies going bust and bankrupt. Then what happens to the mm -hmm. risk? I mean, if I pay insurance premium today for an eventuality that might happen 20 years later, I'm paying medical insurance from a certain age. I might fall ill or sick 20 years later if in between that insurance company goes bust because it has been driven out by competitors, then what happens to my security? The other thing is that as far as penetration is concerned, see if you want in India the insurance sector to penetrate uh, to a greater extent, what is essentially the position? In a country like India, what is the barrier to the entry of many people into getting the benefits of insurance is? that as their ability to pay a premium declines, the risk factors actually increase. Mm -hmm. So people who are more vulnerable have also lesser ability to pay premium. Now the private logic of insurance is, mm -hmm. the greater is the risk, yeah. the higher must be the premium. Yeah. So as far as the private logic is concerned, you cannot have an extension of the insurance sector in India, mm -hmm. penetration through the private sector. That's where the public sector becomes important. Mm -hmm. That the public sector, which is governed by a different set of principles, could be a possible vehicle for greater penetration. However, if you allow private players to take up the more lucrative parts of the business, mm -hmm. then you also limit the public sector insurance companies' financial ability to extend the benefit to those who are more vulnerable but have lesser ability to pay. Mm -hmm. Because there is some kind of balancing that has to happen that you get people whose risk may be lower but they pay a, a higher premium and you take advantage of the financial strength that that gives you to extend the benefit to those who are more vulnerable but less able. If you let private players take away that part of the business, then you limit the capacity of, even if you maintain a public sector insurance companies, 
their ability to extend that benefit to others gets restricted. So, therefore, there is a rationale for actually maintaining a public sector monopoly. If you have a private monopoly, there are problems with it. A public sector monopoly allows all like this pooling process to happen, all insurance uh, those who need insurance can pay premium to that same insurance company. It is able to balance across the different interests and you do not have the problems of that uh, cutthroat process of competition might result in in which some in companies get driven. So, there is always a strong rationale for maintaining a public sector monopoly and if you look at the historical development of the insurance sector in India, it has largely been based on the public sector and even today both in life and general insurance. 70 percent of the business in life insurance is with LIC, 60 percent of the general insurance business is still with the public sector companies. Mm -hmm. So, the private sector companies have not been able, able to really replace the public sector because that is the nature of that uh, particular activity. So, you do not actually buy these arguments then about greater investment being made possible by this move in areas like infrastructure, even the fact that uh, introdu or having more foreign companies coming in would mean better practices being followed in the industry, whether it is timely payment and so on and so forth. I mean, No, I do not buy these arguments and there are a couple of reasons for that. Number one is as far as insurance is concerned, unlike say a manufacturing activity. In a manufacturing activity, if a foreign firm makes a greenfield investment, mm -hmm. It creates assets which it finances with the money it brings in. Mm -hmm. If it say buys something in India, it requires assets which it finances with the money it brings in. In insurance, you are going to acquire command over a large quantum of financial resources, not by bringing in anything proportionate to that. So, the equity capital of an insurance company is like a bank. Bank's main source of finance or resources are the depositors, not the shareholders. Yep. Same with an insurance company. It is the premium that is paid by policy holders, which is the main uh, source of financial resources. So, all those resources which are generated within your country, you when you allow more foreign penetration into that sector, you are placing that under control of foreign holders with what benefit? You do not have the significant benefit in terms of augmenting domestic resources by foreign investment because the scale of that investment is too small in relation to the resources being come Number two is the other way in which FDI is supposed to bring some benefits is it brings know-how. It brings know-how. Mm -hmm. Now, I am not able to understand this that in a sector like insurance where the production of products or services is not like producing a sophisticated drug or a sophisticated manufacturing process requiring large amount of investment in R&D. If that is something that we are not capable of doing ourselves, what are we capable of doing? And since if we do not have that capability, then that should be an added reason mm -hmm. for not allowing all these players in because you need that ability if you are going to regulate that sector. It is not a sector that can exist without regulation. Mm -hmm. You cannot have a complete free market in insurance you have to have regulation. So, if you do not have the capacity within the country to understand what are the requirements of that, how are you going to regulate it? Mm -hmm. If you have that, you do not need these foreign players for this activity. Right. Okay. If you do not need foreign players for this activity. Secondly, as far as the foreign players are concerned, what is the historical experience? What is the evidence on the basis of which one would say that they know this business very well? Is it the case? Is it the case that the benefits of insurance that do we not know about how difficult people difficulties people have in the United States in getting money out of their insurance companies mm -hmm. when there is a medical problem and all of that? In this country without even a legal processes working as quickly as they may there, what is likely to happen? Number two is do we not know the experience of what insurance companies have done in with the money that they have put into financial markets. We know the story of AIG, what has happened, it had to be bailed out. Mm -hmm. okay. So, what is the evidence on the basis of which one says that they know how to do these things and they are going to be bring that know-how to us. Mm -hmm. okay. I do not think there is any real evidence on that basis. And if insurance is a business mm -hmm. in which policy holder is essentially transferring the burden of risk. Mm -hmm. You have to ensure that the use that is made of the 
money that is put yeah, together from the premiums mm -hmm. is not in such a manner as to place, to yeah, increase the degree of yeah, risk. Yeah. But that's precisely the kind of behavior that one has seen. Now, given that the market will continue, I presume, to be heavily regulated, are these fears of an AIG-like situation occurring in India a little overstated? Uh, I mean, are the negative impacts really likely to be so bad? Well, you see, this AIG-like situation also happened in a context where there was regulation, but there was also a story of a process of that regulatory framework changing mm -hmm. over time and creating the possibilities of an AIG-like situation. So there was a, a story of a regulatory failure. Mm -hmm. Now in the Indian context, the question is that, are, is this the end? No. This is only one step in a chain which is leading in the same direction mm -hmm. because this is part of a process of deregulation that a restriction that existed mm -hmm. you are reducing that restriction. Now of course the argument is if, when 24, 25% was allowed you said it will be only limited mm -hmm. there is a degree of India. even today it is being said 49% we are increasing and it too but control will, will remain in Indian hands. But if control is going to remain in Indian hands, why is, what is the meaning of increasing it to 49% in any case? Mm -hmm. It is part actually of a process where you are increasing the possibilities of that kind of a situation arising. So I do not think that the existing scenario should be taken as the final. I would look at this particular move as part of a process to go because of what is driving it. Mm -hmm. It, what, it's not an economic rationale, it is not the interests of the customers, it is not really the interests of the economy which is driving this. If it is being driven by interests which are seeking to acquire greater control over these financial resources in order to be able to play in financial markets with these, then this is not the end. Right. More is likely to follow. So therefore, it is important to say no at this point and not just say or make an assessment based on precisely what is the situation today because this is an indicator of more things that are to follow. Sure. Now, the BJP had of course opposed the increasing of caps in FDI in this sector when they were in opposition. Notably, the parliamentary committee headed by Ashan Sinha had uh, rejected this proposal. Um, of course, now they are pushing this, this move while the Congress, which was pushing it previously, is, is opposing it now. Why do you think there's, there's been this change in positions? Is it purely a political game? See, when they are in government, I think, uh, when anyone is in government, then it, that it is on them that these forces which are interested in this kind of deregulation have the greatest degree of influence. When you are not in government, however, there is an objective reality. Mm -hmm. Let's say in this country, okay, you privatize the insurance sector. But in some sense, uh, the people have voted with their money when they still keep more of their money with LIC or the public sector general insurance companies than with private companies. They are much more wary about putting. So within society, there is a, there is a sentiment that maybe the public sector is better mm -hmm. and there should be restrictions on this. So when these parties are in opposition, Within employees in that sector also there are, there, there are similar concerns. So when they are in opposition, they are a little bit more prone to reflect that sentiment. But when they go into government, then a different set of forces take over in shaping the actualism. What is common is that when in government, they have taken the same approach. On this Absolutely. Question. I think that's a really important point yeah. to sort of note that essentially they follow the same economic strategy yeah. irrespective of which party is actually in power. Something that was being opposed is one of the first major decisions that you take after coming into government. So, how do you think the situation will play out now? I mean, you've spoken about it essentially being like the thinner ed edge of the wedge. I mean, you know, I mean, how, how this is just one step in a series of, of, of steps that might, you know, look to further privatize this sector. How do you see this actually being played out given the opposition that this move is facing? The left parties are opposing it as are various other regional parties, um, trade unions, so on and so forth. I think if it is simply reliant on, if the process is simply reliant on 
when pe- parties are in opposition they behave in one way and when they are in government they behave in different way if it's simply reliant on that because there is no genuine commitment to th- stopping this or reversing this on either of those sides this process is likely to go on mm-hmm. i think it will not be settled however by just this but at the larger level of society of different sections of society when they act and to what extent they are able to exert pressure on the government to amend the way it's approaching and this not going to be happen only on the question of insurance but a whole uh, this is part of a larger policy framework which has uh, proved itself over the last 20 years as capable of generating tremendous riches at one end but not being able to significantly transform the lives of in a positive way of large sections of the indian population so that division as it plays itself out how it plays itself out in society in politics will of course shape what will eventually happen i don't think simply when I mean, the congress and bjp depending upon whether they are in government or opposition behaving differently if that is all there is to it then i see this process only going on well let's hope that we aren't in for such difficult times thank you surajit for joining us today that's all the time we have on news click today do join us again later